perturbation pyramid to jack heat transfer and a war regulars on laminar turbulent trans transition. It's time for you, Winnie. Okay. Uh, hello. Well, uh, can you? Uh, yeah, okay. Can, could you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yeah, mm. yeah, we can see. Okay. okay well, I will start. Uh, well, um, could you hear me? Yes, we hear you. We. we ah, we, thanks. Yeah. Well, well, I will start now. Then, um, well, first of all, I am. I am very glad to be here and um, invited by the professor Chao Kung Liu to give um, my my to give uh, a presentation about my research titled Study of the Influence of Perturbation Parameters, Conjugate Heat Transfer, and Wall Rugness on Laminar Turbulent Transition. <clears throat> well, my name is William Machaca, and I am a head teaching assistant and by, at Balseiro Institute and a researcher at, in the Computational Mechanics Department at Bariloche Atomic Center in Argentina. Um, this work is a significant part of my PhD program under the supervision of professors Federico Teruel and Enzo Dari. Well, <clears throat> first I will give a brief introduction about the topic. Then I will talk about the numerical method uh, then I will present the main results of this study, that is the influence of perturbation parameters, conjugate heat transfer, and wall rudeness on laminar turbulent transition. Finally, I will summarize uh, this work in the conclusions. About the, the phenomenon, the laminar turbulent transition is presented in various engineering applications, such as airplane wings, electronic devices, uh, and others. In this regime, uh, parameters like friction coefficient and nozzle number exhibit a significant variation, then it is difficult their modeling and prediction. Uh, particularly in Argentina, this phenomenon has become of great importance after the upgrade of the nuclear research reactor RA6. This nuclear research reactor operates in a range of parameters that include the transition regime. Then it is important for our institution to study this phenomenon. <clears throat> well, what is the aim of the present work? Well, in this, in this work, uh, we study some specific aspects of the laminar turbulent transition phenomenon. And we try to answer the following questions. What is the influence of perturbation parameters imposed at the channel inlet? What is the impact of the wall thickness on thermal quantities? And what is the role of the rudeness? <clears throat> well, about the numerical method, how to model numerically this phenomenon? First of all, we need three things. Uh, we need a simple domain, a numerical tool, and an instability tool to destabilize the code in computationally acceptable domain. About the domain, for, fortunately for us, the nuclear research reactor has a fuel element that is composed by rectangular channels. These channels has an aspect radio, and that is the radio of width to height, of 22. We know uh, that Binuesa et al. in the research, they show it that if the aspect radio is greater than seven, we can use a periodic boundary condition in the, in the width of the channel. Then we have this simple domain, this rectangular channel to make our numerical simulations, where X is the streamwise direction, Y is the uh, wall normal direction, and C is the spanwise direction. About the numerical tool, we use the incompact 3D code. This code solves the Navier Stokes equations in a rectangular domain, and it has the capacity to impose different boundary conditions. <clears throat> also, this code is friendly users 
and solve the Navier-Stokes equation with high precision using high order compact finite different schemes and is parallelized under the MPI paradigm. Regarding the instability tool, we use the linear stability theory analysis to uh, destabilize the flow in computationally acceptable domain. Using this theory, we impose at the channel inlet a laminar base flow plus a perturbation. This perturbation is composed by the Tolmin switching waves, that is the two-dimensional perturbation, and by a pair of oblique waves, that is the three-dimensional perturbation, where H2D and H3D are the amplitude of two and three-dimensional perturbations respectively. Also, UTD and U3D are the eigenfunctions calculated solving the or Sommerfeld and the square eigen value problem for a fixed Reynolds number, a fixed wave number in a spanwise direction beta, and a fixed frequency omega. Well, using the simple domain, the incompact 3D code, and the linear stability analysis, we were able to make a numerical simulation about the laminar turbulent transition in this rectangular um, domain. We perturbed the flow at the entrance of the channel using a perturbation calculated by these fixed perturbation parameters. That is Reynolds number, frequency in two and three dimension, is a, a wave number in a spanwise direction and the amplitude of two and three dimension. <clears throat> in, this, uh, in this video, we can see the vortex structures in the laminar turbulent transition phenomenon. Downstream the inlet, we can see the laminar region and upstream the outlet, we can see the turbulent region. Um, it is important to see that in the transition region, there are hairpin vortices populating the channel cross section. Then we decided to calculate the friction Reynolds number in function of a streamwise direction. We show the result in this figure. We can see the laminar region downstream the inlet, an increase of this quantity in the transition region a peak, a decrease of this quantity, and the turbulent region. Also, we visualize the harping vortex structures in more detail using the lambda 2 method in the transition region. You can see these vortex structures in this video. <clears throat> Well, with the capacity to make numerical simulation of the laminar turbulent transition phenomenon, now I will present the main results of this study. First, I will present the results of the influence of the amplitude of the perturbations parameters on laminar turbulent transition. We made different simulations in this rectangular domain where we impose at the channel inlet a laminar base flow plus a perturbation. The perturbation was calculated um, for a fixed Reynolds number, a fixed um, frequency in two and three dimension, now, and a fixed wave number in a spanwise direction. We varied only the, the amplitude of two and three dimensional perturbations, where H2D and H3D are the amplitude of the two and three dimensional perturbations. All the cases are shown in this table, where I is the inlet turbulence intensity. In this figure, in the left figure, we can see the friction Reynolds number in function of a streamwise direction. It is possible to see that the amplitude of the perturbation exert great influence in the onset of the transition. Then we decided to shift the cases so the maximum of each one 
coincides with each other. The result of these operations can be seen in the right figure. Then we can conclude that while the amplitude of the perturbations exert influence on the onset of the transition, it doesn't significantly alter the shape of this turbulent quantity. <clears throat> then we made a comparison between two cases with very different amplitude of two-dimensional perturbations, 6% case A and 3% case B. In the left figure, we can see the friction Reynolds number in function of X, where the case A is shifted 50 channel half heights to the right. That is, the peak of the friction Reynolds number for case A is located at 50, and the friction Reynolds number for case B is located at 100. In the right figure, we can see the Reynolds stresses in non-dimensional units along the transition. Using these uh, results and following the case, the results of the case B, we identified different uh, stages of the transition. First, we have a quasi-laminar region where these quantities have constant values, a late stage where the streamwise velocity fluctuations increase its value, a super late stage where all the quantities start to increase significantly its values, the post-transitional region where the friction Reynolds number decreases its value, and finally, the turbulent region. <clears throat> then we study the structures in the laminar turbulent transition in two cases. We use the lambda 2 method. Although this method is sensible to the value of the lambda 2, we were able to see different structures along the transitions. In case A, A we can see the TS wave packet for both cases. Case A is in the left figure and case B is in the right figure. No? In B, we can see the triangle shaped vortex in both cases. This vortex is characteristic of the late stage. In C, you can see the harping vortices that is a characteristic of the super late stage. And in D, we can see the evolution and interaction of this vortex that, that generate the turbulent region. It is important to see in these figures that upstream the peak of the friction Reynolds number that there are helping vortices populating the channel cross section. Then these vortices play a key role in the formation of the peak of the friction Reynolds number. <clears throat> After presenting the result of the hydrodynamic field, we decided to show the, the results of the heat transfer. Well, why do we study the conjugate heat transfer? Well, we know that the temperature fluctuations at fleet solid interface is a concern in nuclear power reactors. These temperature fluctuations can cause stress in the solid field that may generate some cracks as in Sibau's one nuclear power plant. Also, to the knowledge of the authors, there isn't a results of conjugate heat transfer in the laminar turbulent transition phenomenon in channel flows in the open literature. For this reason, we decided to study this problem. <clears throat> we study this problem in this rectangular domain with solid walls. In the fluid field, we solve the navier stokes equations and the energy equations using the incompact 3D code. And in the solid field, we developed a 3D module to solve the conduction equation. This module has, was coupled to incompact 3D code. <clears throat> um, we made uh, different simulations for Reynolds number 4200 and 3420. 
We made these simulations using these fixed perturbation parameters and these fixed simulation parameters. For the higher Reynolds number, we made simulations for five prime numbers. And for the lower Reynolds number, we made a, a simulation for a fixed prime number. The results of the conjugate heat transfer were compared to the results of uniform heat flux. Recall that the, that the uniform heat flux is simulated without the solid walls. In this slide, we present the results for the lower Reynolds number. In the right figure, we present the friction Reynolds number in function of a streamwise direction. And in the right figure, we present the Nussel number in function of X. We can see a laminar region downstream the inlet in this parameter, an increase of this quantity in the transition region, a peak, a post-transition zone, and finally, the fully developed turbulent region. In the last region, our results are in good agreement with the results calculated by Flagewell Toll in periodic turbulent channel flow. Also, in this regime, in this turbulent region, our results about the uh, profiles of the temperature variance in fluid and solid field that is presented in the bottom left figure and our results of the temperature variance and turbulent heat flux profiles in the fluid field that is presented in the right figure are in good agreement with the reference values. In these two figures, the lines are the results of our present simulation and the symbols are the results of the, of the reference values. Now, in this figure, I present uh, the results for the higher Reynolds number and five different prime numbers for the two thermal boundary conditions, uniform heat flux and conjoint heat transfer. After analyzing the results, we found that there is a maximum relative error of 6% between two thermal boundary conditions along the transition. Then we developed a correlation for these heat transfer parameters. In this figure, we present the Nussel number in function of X for our correlation and the results of the uniform heat flux thermal boundary conditions. It is possible to see that there is a good agreement between the correlations and the DNS results. And also you can find these results in a paper we published this year. <clears throat> now, in this slide, we present that wild temperature fluctuations for the lower Reynolds number are for, are for one prime number. In the, uh, in the upper figure, we present the uniform heat flux case, and in the lower figure, we present the conjoint heat transfer results. Also, we present the, uh, the streamwise velocity fluctuations near the channel walls. It is important that the, the temperature fluctuations in, at the interface of the fluid solid mimic in certain degree the dynamic of the velocity field. In this figure, we present the evolution of the wall temperature variance along that transition for the two thermal boundary condition. And in the right figure, we present the difference between two thermal boundary condition along that, along that transition. It is important to mention that there is an order of magnitude of difference between the peak and the turbulent value. Also, it is important to see that the uniform heat flux results overestimate the conjoint heat transfer results along the transition. Then, it is important to modulate conjoint heat transfer in situations where thermal fatigue is a concern. Finally, I will present I present the temperature variance in function of streamwise direction for two Reynolds number and one prime number. In turbulent region, both cases have approximately a value of one. In the transition region, 
the, the higher Reynolds number has a peak, or a peak that is approximately four, and the lower Reynolds number has a peak that is approximately 42. Then it is possible to conclude that the Reynolds number has a great impact in the transition region, but not in the turbulent zone. Now I will present the results of the influence of the uniform roughness on laminar turbulent transition. To model the wall roughness, it's difficult because it depends on its height, its height, um, its density, its distribution, and its shape. For this reason, we use a, a 2D roughness, a simple model that was simulated by numerous researchers in periodic turbulent channel flow. The characteristics of this simple two-dimensional roughness is that the height is 0 0.034 and the spanwise periodicity in the streamwise, the streamwise periodicity is between two bars is eight. <clears throat> we made two simulations. First, uh, one simulation using uh, the uniform roughness in the wall channels and the other simulations in a smooth channel. We made these simulations because we want to compare the results of the root case with the result of the smooth case. <clears throat> in this figure, we present the evolution of friction Reynolds number along the, along the streamwise direction. We can see that downstream X approximately 20, the roughness increased significantly the value of this quantity respect to the smooth case. And in the turbulent region, the, Reynold, the friction Reynolds number is increased by a factor of 1.7. Also, we analyze the vortex structures in these two cases. In this figure, we can see in the left, the root case, and in the right, the smooth case. In the upper figure, we can see the TS wave packet, and in the lower figure, we can see the triangle-shaped vortex and the high pink vortices populating the channel cross-section. It is important to mention that from x equals zero to x 15, the intensity of the vortex structures are more intense in the smooth case than in the root case. Then in this figure, we can see the vortex structure downstream X approximately 30. In the upper figure, we can see the results of the root case. And in the lower figure, we can see the vortex structure for the smooth case. We can see that there are more structures in the root case in this region. Well, using the, the, analy the analysis of the as vortices as structure and the friction Reynolds number, we can conclude that downstream the high pin vortices populate the channel cross section, the root exert great influence in turbulence quantities. Now, in this figure, we present the mean velocity for profile at different X positions. Uh, in each figure, we can see for the root case, two profiles. Q1 in the middle of the crest and Q2 in the middle between two bars. And the smooth case is presented in blue. It is important to see that downstream X equals 20, the temperature profile in the logarithmic region decreases its value respect to the smooth case. And downstream X equals 40, the, the roughness function is 9.5. In this figure, we present the Reynolds normal stresses in function of X. First, we can see that the roughness delay the transition. For example, if you see the wall normal Reynolds stresses that is in color green, you can see that the roughness de delay in five channel half heights the 
approximately the transition. This means that the roughness has the potential to delay the transition. Also, we can see that downstream X approximately 25, the roughness increase these quantities respect to the smooth case. Also, we can see that the post-transition zone region decrease its region respect to the smooth case. We can see this if we analyze the turbulent kinetic energy. For example, if you see the turbulent kinetic energy for the root case, you can see that that this it uh, um, uh, reach. William, uh, yes. Kind of reminder: you have five minutes left. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Well, um, in this figure, uh, you can see that the, the post-transition region uh, in the root case is um, fewer than in the smooth case. Well, I will um, now I will present the, the main conclusion of my study. Well, first, the amplitude of the perturbation doesn't exert great influence in the shape of the friction Reynolds number. We found that the hyperin vortices play a key role in the transition region. Also, we developed a correlation for the Nusel number along the transition, and we mm, we watched that the thermal boundary condition exert great influence on temperature fluctuations along the transition, and this um, and the wall temperature variance is dependent on Reynolds number in the transition region. Respect to the to the study of the influence of the roughness, we found that the roughness has the capacity to delay the transition, and uh, it exerts influence on turbulence quantities downstream the hairpin vortices populate the channel cross section. <clears throat> well, uh, finally, I I want to thank uh, my superv supervisor. Federico Teruel and Enzo Dari, and some of my of my collaborators, and uh, Balseiro Institute, National University of Cuyo, and National Atomic Energy Commission for giving me the opportunity to study this beautiful phenomenon. Well, that's all. Um, if you have some questions, let me know. Thanks. Oh, oh, <clears throat> okay. Thank, thank you for for your excellent presentation. And now does anyone have any questions or discussion regarding the presentation? So, so dear William. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I agree with a couple of questions. Uh, one, I don't fully understand the, uh, the color. So, so the color means what? Uh, I, I got a water structure. The second question is, uh, you you seems to you get a conclusion. Roughly, so we are delayed the transition, but uh, usually we think uh, the roughly could be source of disturbance. Yeah, could uh, you know uh, increase you know, or uh, you know not delaying you know uh, easy to get a transition. So that's just the opposite. I don't know yeah what 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 happened. But, uh, Yes, uh, that uh, we we were thinking about this phenomenon a lot with my supervisor, and we found that uh, this happens because we are using at the inlet of the channel um, an optimal perturbation calculated for a smooth channel. So the 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 optimal perturbation is not calculated for the root case; it's only calculated for the smooth channel. Then this optimal perturbation, uh, we think that the roughness decrease or change this optimal perturbation, and for that reason, um, the roughness delay uh, the transition. Uh, that is also uh, our hypothesis. We we need to study a lot in this uh, phenomenon, but we all we we know that. Uh, so many researchers in the literature say that the roughness uh, accelerate the transition, but in our simulation we we don't see that. No, mm, we didn't see that. Uh, that is so strange for us too. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm done. You can go to the next one. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I would like to invite our second presenter. Jin Nian Tong, his title is a vortex identification and uh, its influence on um, particle exposure characteristic in a realistic uh, human lethal airway. And it's time for Jin Nian Tong's pretension. Please begin your pretension. <laughs> We, we we can't hear you. You mute. You mute. Oh, sorry. Over now. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, everyone. Me. Yeah, thanks for the chair and the uh, well, we committee. Your computer. Yes, the I know. Screen. So I'm going to share my uh, slides. Share. Hi everyone, Th thanks for your uh, for the invitation and uh, it's a great, great opportunity for me to share my uh, recent uh, publication, uh, recent research progress by using a uh, Lutex uh, method to processing the results in biofluids field. So first of all, I want to apologize. I'm using a different topic for this presentation. So this one is not uh, uh, the, the, the title introduced by the chair, so it's a uh, it's a transition related with uh, blood flow. Uh, so uh, let's start. So today's uh, my my topic is uh, numerical detection of vortex phenomena in a patient specific abdominal aorta uh, aneurysm using lutex based method. My name is Jing Dong. Currently, I'm working as a lecturer and, uh, and a research fellow at uh, Victoria University in Melbourne. So here's a little bit of uh, background information. Abdominal uh, aorta uh, aneurysm or triple A is a pathologic local dilation of the abdominal aorta, uh, which is an expanded uh, section of the artery. And uh, according to epi epidemiological studies, uh, triple A or uh, this kind of aneurysm have shown an increased incidence uh, around the world, ranging from uh, ranging between 4.2% to 11% uh, per year. So this kind of disease uh, poses a major threat to health because uh, it can lead to death, and the grave outcome uh, can be uh, uh, as as uh, as much as 80% in the event of rupture, which is very dangerous. Uh, the current research status, uh, uh, we only have uh, limited clinical guidance for the treatment of AAA, and uh, there's no established conclusive approach for uh, guiding uh, how to treat the, uh, how to prevent the AAA rupture uh, during uh, uh, clinical uh, diagnosis process. Most uh, most clinicians are based on their empirical or, or experience guideline. Ideally, this problem uh, needs to be investigated from a biomechanical point of view uh, to provide a comprehensive wall stress and wall strains and hemodynamic analysis results, which can uh, allow the clinicians to make more informed decisions rather than based on their experience or empirical guidelines. Oops. So here are some challenges. So, uh, triple A uh, or the aneurysm, the aorta aneurysm will be uh, will rupture only when the mechanical stress 
acting on the aneurysm exceeds the ability of the wall of the artery wall to withstand these stresses. Um, and uh, circulatory flows emerge within the uh, uh, aneurysm vessel. Uh, because of the expanded uh, artery shape, uh, we can imagine there will be a flow separation. That's why I recall it. Uh, uh, we we can ex we expect there will be a circulatory flows. Hence, the flow becomes disturbed with oscillatory characteristics, which can lead to unstable wash stress. Uh, this kind of uh, flow situation can uh, make the aneurysm continue to expand or or lead to a rupture. So a comprehensive analysis of the flow field, especially for the vortex structures in the aneurysm sac or the, the, the expanded flow domain as flow section is, uh, is, uh, is needed. So uh, my approach is using a computational uh, fluid dynamics approach to, uh, to do this uh, using a, uh, uh, to, do this, to do this virtually. So, to start with the uh, simulation, we need to have the uh, artery vessel geometry ready. So this slide uh, presents the basic procedure about how to uh, reconstruct the realistic arterial model from CT images or MR images. So basically, there are three steps. The first step is uh, using threshold-based lumen segmentation, segmentation method to detect the profile or the outline of the uh, artery vessel uh, on each uh, each location, the scan location. So then we uh, reconstruct the three D model uh, by by linking all these uh, profiles together. Then we can have a three 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 uh, D geometry model. Uh, then we see this this geometry model as a STO file, which is a universally uh, acceptable uh, digital file. Then we use this file to create CFD uh, uh, mesh. Uh, then we apply the boundary conditions. Then we run the simulation. Then we analyze the results. So this slide is pre uh, uh, describes uh, how the boundary condition was uh, applied for this specific uh, uh, artery uh, case study. So we use velocity inlet, pressure outlet, and the no slip wall conditions, and also the governing equations are a conservation of a mass and momentum. Uh, for the mesh, we apply polyhedral mesh and the total mesh element, element numbers after the independent, independent test is 12.2 uh, uh, thousand elements with uh, 10 layers of prism or refined mesh uh, near the wall. This can be shown here. There's an uh, example showing the how the mesh configuration of the internal or uh, interior of the fluid domain. So this slide uh, presents the uh, boundary conditions to, uh, um, to simulate the realistic uh, unsteady flow condition. We need to consider uh, the, uh, the unsteady uh, flow condition and also the pressure condition. So for the, for in this image, uh, the purple line represents the uh, uh, flow uh, flow rates. The red line represents the uh, pressure. So in in our simulation, we set up the uh, time step size as uh, 0 0.001 seconds to resolve the unsteady uh, flow phenomena, and we also extract the results at three key time events, T1, T2, T3, which is uh, representing uh, different, uh, uh, different time in uh, systolic and uh, di diastolic uh, phase of the uh, cardiolic cycle. The key measures used in, in our research is the vortex identification method which is based on LUTEX uh, model. And uh, uh, by collaborating with, uh, uh, with EFI, uh, I'm able to extract the uh, LUTEX, LUTEX uh, magnitudes and uh, as well as uh, 
um, what should I say? The vector of the uh, lutex uh, based on my simulation. So this is the result. First of all, I present the velocity fields uh, during three key time events of the uh, cardiac cycle. So the first one represents a peak systole, and the second one represents early diastole, and the last one is the late diastole. As we can see from the velocity fields, we can see the uh, flow acceleration and the uh, deacceleration de de along the uh, course of the simulation time. We also can observe the, the flow disturbance within the aneurysm section. To quantify the disturbance of the flow, uh, we use uh, a few different ways. This one is uh, using the streamline uh, uh, and also the streamline to show the flow separation within the aneurysm section. And also the, uh, the, the flow direction also, also highlighted by the uh, arrowheads. Uh, we can see a strong a uh, vortex is form, uh, is uh, is uh, established within this aneurysm uh, for especially for T1 events and uh, T3 events, but a little weak in uh, T2 because this is a dial uh, early diastole phase. This slide is showing the washer stress, uh, which is uh, uh, another key uh, uh, indicator of the artery vessel, uh, the health condition of the artery, artery vessel. Basically, high washer stress indicates the uh, epithelium or the inner wall, uh, inner surface of the artery wall is uh, subject to higher uh, shear pressure, which is not good. Uh, we can see few uh, uh, red regions uh, along, uh, we can few few red regions at the edge of the aneurysm. Either the for this for example either the uh, anterior part or the pos posterior part of the aneurysm is subject to higher washer stress, which is uh, uh, can lead to the rupture or, or lead to high risk of aneurysm uh, rupture. Uh, this one is uh, this slide is showing the vortex structure. By using a uh, lutex model, we can extract the vortex structure uh, within the arterial uh, flow domain. Uh, for this slide specifically, we use an isotropic uh, surface to show the structure where we set the uh, magnitudes, the lutex magnitudes as uh, 50. We can see a uh, disturbed flow, blood flow uh, in the aneurysm region. And uh, we can see a clear uh, water structure in the T1 and the T2 time events. Um, and also we can uh, we can see, uh, we can observe the swelling motion was significantly reduced according to the vortex structure in T3 event, because this one is a, is a, a protein to the end of the uh, cardiac cycle. This one continue to the previous results. This one is using, uh, we, we extract the vortex structure by cutting a slice along the uh, arterial vessel. Uh, but this slice is not a, a vertical slice. We combined few uh, slices, probably three sections together to show the uh, internal vortex structure slice results. Where we can see the high magnitude values. Uh, for example, here and uh, especially uh, the whole aneurysm region, uh, we can we can see few uh, uh, red dots, which means the vortex or, or the rotating uh, motion of the blood flow is uh, pretty strong during these uh, time events. We also link the observed results with uh, clinical or uh, pathological results. This one is a pathological study which shows the, the relation between vortex and uh, 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 matrix uh, aggreg aggregation. So uh, according to the pathological study, a stronger uh, vortex uh, can lead to uh, uh, 
uh, activated uh, platelets in the blood flow, which means uh, that will increase the risk of uh, uh, thrombosis or, or formation of uh, blood clot, which is uh, 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 highly uh, dangerous for the patients. So now by using the uh, vortex uh, analysis approach, Lutex uh, uh, model, uh, we can uh, quantify the vortex structure and magnitudes within the blood flow, which is very uh, helpful for the clinicians to make informed decision during the diagnosis, uh, when, 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 when performing diagnosis. The last slide is a, is a pressure uh, results, which is uh, directly linked to the uh, rupture of the aneurysm. So we can see for the peak systole event, there's a uh, concentrated press pressure uh, up with uh, uh, the, the aneurysm experience uh, high, high pressure value during the peak systole, which is uh, 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 can contribute to the higher risk of the ru higher rupture risk of the, of the aneurysm. So the conclusion, mm, in, in this study, we uh, conducted a transient, 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 uh, transient numerical simulation of the blood flow. And also the oscillatory flow patterns were reviewed in the uh, triple A sec. Uh, we use uh, by using velocity, streamlines, and washout stress. A strong swelling motions were identified by Lutex magnitudes. And uh, we can see a uh, uh, predominantly are concentrated around the aneurysm region. The numerical approach presented in this study uh, are expected to help uh, st uh, stratify the rupture risk of an uh, ruptured uh, aneurysm in clinical or practical use. Uh, th that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your <clears throat> excellent presentation. Uh, now, does anyone have any questions or discussing regarding the, this presentation? Yeah, if you have any question, please. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Uh, I have some questions. Uh, the, my first question is, what pressure distribution you have used in your analysis in the beginning? Uh, can, you still uh, can you still see my uh, slides? I'm not sure I'm still sharing or not. Yes, you are still sharing. I can see them. Okay. Yeah, good. So this is the uh, bonding condition setup. I'm not sure uh, uh, what's your question related. So basically, we uh, we apply the bonding condition uh, onto our safety model. Uh, the, the, the pressure... Uh, uh, condition was uh, set uh, as the outlet, uh, and the velocity was set as uh, imposed as the inlet, and the rest of the artery uh, artery wall uh, we we set as a rigid wall. We didn't consider the uh, the expansion and the contraction of the artery. Okay, uh, you know why? Because you know I have done some tests on this uh, system. And what mm -hmm. I have used was some double hunch uh, profile. So I wanted to check what I have done with this year. And what was your Reynolds number? It's lambda, I think. Um, where I provide the information? Definitely, I think it's in lambda range uh, because this simulation was done uh, uh, for for a long time. I can't recall the exact okay. number here now. Okay, uh, no problem. I, can I send you an email? Do you can you see, sh show me your email that I can send you later? Ah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> welcome, Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Uh, my welcome. email is here. Uh, at vu .edu .au. Jin Liang at vu.edu.au. Thank you very much.
No worries. Thanks for your uh, interest. It. Thank you. Oh. Does anyone have other questions? Okay, if there's no question, I'm going to stop sharing and we can uh, move to the next speaker. Thanks for help me, uh, having me and uh, the opportunity to share my uh, recent progress uh, by using uh, UTEX approach. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, but Dr. Okay. Uh, I, I would this like to... I, I think we should stick to the program and uh, wait until 10 to start our next uh, talk. Okay. Okay, okay. So let's take a, a small break.
Okay, it's time for the next president presenter, Farid Rosta. His title is the new tax identification in turbulent practical lender channel flaws. It's time for Farid presentation. Please begin your. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear. All right. And can you see the screen? Yeah, my presentation. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good evening to you guys in California and good morning to you that are participating from China. I'm Farid Rusta uh, from Clarkson University and today I'm going to present our study which is about using the Leotex uh, vortex identif uh, identification for turbulent particle laden channel flow. So for this presentation, first I'm going to go through a little bit of introduction, motivation and objective of our work. And I'm going to talk about the solver and the computational domain that we are focusing on. And then I'm going to go through the result, first validation of the solver, and then focusing on the Leotex and its apply application in uh, turbulent particle laden flow. And at the end we have conclusion and the future study. So the focus of my research is about turbulent particle laden flow. This sort of uh, flow can happen in lots of uh, natural phenomena and industrial application. For example, as you can see here in these pictures, uh, turbulent particle laden flow can be aerosol in exhale, breeze or sneeze or it can be sediment transport in river. River is the uh, our turbulent flow and sediment particles. Same for blood flow and a red blood cell inside the blood flow and uh, air pollution, uh, volcanic eruption, rain formation in clouds and sand and dust storm, which are all uh, turbulent particle laden flows. So for a study of this sort of flow, we have two main approach. Both of them are coming uh, with uh, lots of complicates, uh, uh, complication, especially uh, due to uh, natural uh, complexity of turbulent flow and in increase uh, because of the interaction of the turbulent flow with dispersed particles. And especially when we are focusing on non-homogeneous turbulent flow or when we are focusing on heat transfer of these sort of flows. Uh, two main approaches, as I mentioned, experimental studies and numerical studies. Experimental uh, studies can be very useful uh, for getting physical information about the data, about the, the flow. And these data from experimental study can be used to validate the numerical solver. solver. But uh, sometimes it's very hard to perform this sort of uh, study for lots of uh, like application of this sort of flow and in uh, many times it's so expensive and time consuming to do the experimental study. On the other hand, we have numerical study. First, for this uh, 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 branch of a study, we need a robust numerical algorithm. Then uh, based on this um, approach, we can go through studying the effect of different parameter and uh, we can predict the future behavior of the flow and we can go through design optimization for different applications. So the motivation and objective of these studies, first of all, uh, to develop a computational model for accurately predicting the particle dispersion and particle uh, and turbulent flow interaction. And then we want to uh, identify turbulent flow vortices in particle laden flow using the uh, Leotex uh, approach and we want to provide better understanding of influence of particle on the near wall turbulent um, uh, coherent structure for particle laden channel flow especially as a function of uh, like particle Stokes number means that when we are using different uh, particle sets with different uh, Stokes number so as i mentioned this study is focused on the numerical simulation. We are using the Eulerian-Lagrangian approach uh, with uh, 
uh, actually point particle assumption. Basically, we are coupling the Eulerian equation of the uh, fluid flow with Lagrangian particle tracking, which means we are tracking each individual particle in time and space. The advantage of this method is uh, actually its high accuracy to resolve the dispersed phase uh, at lower mass fraction and simplicity of the modeling of the interaction between two phases. For the Eulerian equation of the particles, we have three main approach, DNS, LES, and RANS. DNS resolve all the scale of turbulent flow. No modeling is needed, and uh, this method, as you uh, know, is computationally expensive. On the other hand, we have RANS simulation, which gives us mean quantity of the fluid flow, Raynor's stress term, our model in this approach, and this approach has the lowest computational cost. LES, which stands in between of DNS and RANS, resolve larger scale of um, uh, turbulent flow, and we model the subgrade scale stresses in this approach. For this study, I'm focusing on the uh, DNS result for the rest of this presentation, but we have done uh, a lot for the LES as well. So that would be a part of future study of this work that I'm going to present. For uh, DNS solver, you can see here the Eulerian equation of the fluid flow, continuity, momentum, and energy. I just wanted to mention that we have one-way and two-way coupling between uh, two phases, and this F in the momentum equation of the fluid flow represents the uh, effect of particle on uh, fluid flow, and we have same for energy equation. I'm not going to go through the heat uh, like uh, transfer for this presentation, but uh, I just wanted to mention how we can modify this equation for two-way coupling between the particles and the fluid flow. For the Eulerian equations of the particles, as you can see here, we can update the location of the particles and velocity of the particles with these two equations. For the velocity, of course, we have the drag force and gravity, and we can have shear-induced lift forces as well, based on the Safman equation or uh, uh, McLaughlin correction of this uh, uh, famous Safman lift force. So for the computational domain that we are focusing on, uh, as I mentioned, DNS, we have uh, uh, DNS for carrier phase coupled with Lagrangian particle tracking. We have point particle assumption, one-way or two-way couplings. We have vertical channel flow downward. The result that I'm going to present is for downward flow when we have gravity in a streamwise direction. The dimension of computational domain that you can see in here is 2 pi h, 2 h, and pi h. Uh, streamwise in uh, normal direction and spanwise, with uh, edge being the channel half width. And we have no slip boundary condition for walls and periodic boundary condition for uh, other directions, streamwise stream and spanwise. And uh, friction Reynolds number is 180. We are tracking 200,000 particles inside the channel. Particle wall collision can be assumed as fully elastic. We call it elastic wall or fully absorbing, uh, which we call it trap wall, which means that when particle hit the wall, we just take them out of the domain and replace the particle with a new particle in random location inside the channel. I'm going to go through the detail of this to a mechanism and how it can affect our result that we can get. And for DNS study, we have 128 mesh grid in each direction. Our uh, solvers are uh, parallel, uh, runs in distributed memory environments, so we can increase the uh, Reynolds number and the number of particle inside the channel. I don't want to go through discretizations detail, uh, which is not relevant to this discussion. And we're going to hear a lot about the Stokes number of the particles, which is basically uh, relaxation time for particle velocity divided by fluid time scale in wall unit. Uh, mostly we are focusing on two sets of particles with a Stokes number of 2 and 50. Uh, diameter of the particle in wall unit for a Stokes number of 2 is equal to 0.1 and for 50 would be equal to almost 0.7 just to giving uh, you guys a sense of uh, how 
big the size of our particle is. First, uh, I want to start with the validation of our solver. Here you can see the particle streamwise velocity on the top for three sets of particles with the strokes number of 1, 5, and 25. Here we have the stream uh, wise velocity as a function of y plus, the distance from the walls. Red lines are a result of our study compared to uh, actually a benchmark study, study collaboration between uh, different scientists with different uh, solvers. As you can see, we have a very good agreement for stream wise velocity of the particle for uh, all the particle strokes number considered in this study. I should mention that for this validation, we just have drag force in the velocity equation of the particles, uh, elastic wall assumption for particle and wall uh, collision, and we have uh, Reynolds friction number of 150. At the bottom, you can see particle velocity fluctuation again for uh, same sets of particles, strokes number of 1, 5, and 25. Uh, stream-wise velocity fluctuation, normal velocity fl fluctuation at the middle, and span-wise velocity fluctuation. For all of these cases, we have very good agreement with the, the, the studies in the literature. So let's move on to the actual purpose of this um, uh, study. We want to see that how this uh, new third generation of vortex identification can be applied to particle laden flow and uh, can we see this uh, like uh, streak structure of the uh, turbulent flow for the particle laden flow uh, through this method? So first I wanted to mention what we expect to see in these kind of flows. In near wall region, as you can see in this graph, we have uh, clockwise vortex uh, and counterclockwise vortex because of this uh, like interaction between these vortex vorticities which are happening usually in 50 wall unit distance from each other, we have in sweep and ejection mechanism. And due to this sort of uh, like uh, uh, coherent structure of the flow, we have uh, accumulation of particles in low speed streaks, as you can see in here, uh, for a near wall region of the particles. We want to apply this uh, new uh, vortex generation uh, uh, identification method and see that we can like identify this sort of coherent structure for different uh, the, the type of particle laden flow and then we want to see how the changing the uh, the weight of the particle or the particle strokes number can affect these coherent structures before going through the um, vortex identification method that I mentioned, I just wanted to say that we can use these particles act actually as a uh, uh, vortex visualization uh, method. You can see here we have two sets of particles, a six number of five and hundred. Definitely for particle with a six number of five, they are following the turbulent uh, flow better and we can use these sort of particles, these uh, type of particles, as a method for like un identif identifying the coherent structure of the turbulent flow, especially in near wall region. So I'm starting this video starting from random distribution of the particles inside the channel, and you can see the the actually clockwise and counterclockwise vortices that I mentioned before in here, especially uh, in uh, actually near wall region and how these particles are uh, uh, like sweeping in and uh, how this ejection affect the uh, particle distribution inside the channel. Uh, top, uh, top graphs and contours are elastic wall and bottom one is trap wall, as I mentioned, to a six number of five and hundred for the uh, particle with, with a six number of hundred, we can see that uh, at the first, we can recognize those uh, asteric structure or the, those sweep and ejection mechanism, but because particles are heavier in this case, and uh, uh, we have, for example, for elastic wall, we have a huge uh, accumulation of the particle in near wall region after a while, after running uh, code for a while, and uh, we have high concentration of the particle in uh, center of channel after a while recognizing those structure would be harder for particle with higher strokes number. 
So in these uh, contours, I use the uh, Leutex for like identifying the vort vortices. As you know, Leutex gives us the uh, strengths of the vortex as uh, as well as the uh, uh, rotational axis. So here, isosurfaces that I have in these three contour are uh, presenting the strengths uh, of the Leutex and the green vectors are actually direction at each grid uh, of the computational domain. So we want to see that can we recognize those uh, like coherent structure or those vortices uh, through this method. First, we have the particle free flow. At the middle, we have particle with a Stokes number of two and uh, at the end, we have a Stokes number particle with a Stokes number of 50. You can see here we have those uh, like clockwise and counterclockwise vortices. First of all, I should mention that by adding the particles, uh, the strengths of these uh, uh, vortices decreases as the the threshold of these isosurfaces are increasing. First one is from minus 40 to 40. Second one is from minus 20 to 20, minus 10 to 10 for the six number of 50. By adding the particle with a six number of two, as you can see here, we have this uh, uh, structure, the coherent structure, more clear inside the channel. Here you can see the streak structure. We expect particle line up the in these uh, like black areas between two vortices, and uh, both uh, clockwise and counterclockwise vortices are uh, more dominant for a six number of so by adding the uh, um, particle to the case of particle free, free flow, we have uh, less strengths but more vivid uh, coherent structure of the uh, turbulent flow in near wall region. I should mention that this is a, a, a plane parallel to the wall and uh, all of these are happening in y, y plus less than 10 as you can see in here. For a six number of 50, you can see that uh, we can recognize, we cannot recognize actually the clockwise and counterclockwise or those coherent direction of the flow for this case. And uh, we want to see what is the reason that for the six number of uh, two, we have the higher or more clear coherent structure of the turbulent flow in near wall region. But when we are increasing the six number, uh, we these structure are vanishing and we cannot recognize those uh, coherent structure anymore, anymore for uh, near wall region of the flow. So before that, let me go through this video, which shows the uh, actually Leotex for a six number of two, uh, the middle counter of previous slide, this one, and how it changes over time. As you can see, the direction of these vortices uh, as well as the location of them are uh, changing through the time, but most of the time we have uh, three vortices because we have actually these uh, like span-wise direction is almost 150 uh, wall units, so we, we should expect three vortices uh, all through the channel, all through this graph that I'm showing here. So basically, it's performing very well, actually, for this, actually, at least for this SOX number. So we saw from a previous contour that for a SOX number of two, we have a circuit structure are more uh, prominent compared to the flow without particles. But for a SOX number of 50, circuit structure are less significant compared to the flow without particles and flow with particles of a SOX number two. What are the reason? One reason can be uh, obviously higher six number means that more we have more uh, gravitational moment for the particles or particle particles are uh, 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 following the tur turbulent uh, flow less compared to the six number of the two. And second one can be higher deposition velocity uh, that we have for a higher six number means that these uh, particles basically are coming from outer region to the uh, actually near wall uh, region and basically are suppressing these coherent structure and then depositing uh, on the walls. So for proving this one, I want to go through 
uh, study of the position velocity part before that let me uh, actually uh, go through more detail about the elastic wall and uh, trap wall that I introduced before. Here you can at the left side uh, of this slide, you can uh, see concentration of the particle as a function of time starting from random distribution through the channel for the elastic wall assumption. Elastic wall means that the particle hit the wall, bounce back to the flow. Here you can see that uh, concentration are, is increasing through the time for both particle with a switch number of two and 100. Basically, we cannot reach to a steady uh, state or fully developed flow for uh, with this assumption. You can see in this contour that eventually all the particles, because of the turbofrosis pushing particle toward the wall, are accumulating uh, in a very close region uh, to the wall. That's why we switch to the travel assumption, means that when particle hit the wall, we take them out of the uh, um, computational domain. We assume that they are deposited and we introduce another particle to keep the num uh, total number of particles constant through the region. Uh, we introduce another particle uh, uh, in random location inside the channel. So the position velocity, as I mentioned, can be a very important factor for uh, uh, how these like uh, particles are affecting the coherent structure near wall region. Here you can see the position velocity as a function of a Stokes number. Uh, black line and dots are coming from literature, experimental and uh, previous experimental and numerical studies. Red line is our study for downward flow and uh, blue line is our study for no gravity. The focus was uh, on the downward flow. So as we can see here, by increasing the Sux number, we have higher deposition velocity, which basically approves the previous assumption that we had. Particles are coming from for higher Sux number, 50 compared to 2. Uh, we have higher flux of particle toward the wall from outer region. So basically, we are damping this coherent structure. So basically, we have less strict structure for particles in near wall region. Here you can see these streak structure or how these particles are uh, following or accumulating in near wall region and uh, compared to the um, uh, vortexes that vortices that we identify through the Leotex method. Here you can see that we have um, particles, especially for six number of two, we have particle uh, uh, elongated in between uh, two vortices, counterwise and clockwise vortices. So we can say that particles tend to accumulate in areas with lower vortex strengths. The elongated structure of particles is more uh, pronounced at the six number of two, but we cannot uh, identify those structures for uh, six number of 50, as I mentioned before, and uh, based on the reasons that we went through on previous slides. So for conclusion, uh, the Leotex vortex uh, identification for particle in a flow indicates that introducing particles with a Stokes number of uh, two enhance the streak structure of turbulent flow in near wall region, as we saw before. Adding particles with a Stokes number of 50 uh, attenuates the turbulent structure in near wall region, and particle uh, elongation in near wall region is more pronounced for a Stokes number of two. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll be with you for with any for any question. Okay, thank you for the excellent presentation. And now does anyone have any questions or discussion regarding the presentation? I think someone has a question, but I cannot see. Yeah, he can over his mic. The mute. So you need to open the mic. Can I ask a question? Sure, yeah, I can hear uh, you. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for your exciting presentation. Uh, I have one question. Um, sure. Did you um, did you observe symmetric hairpins from 
the distribution of particles. Actually, for this uh, Sux number of that um, that we are considering, not very clearly, because uh, the the minimum Sux number that I went through for this uh, like study was a Sux number of two. We are not expecting that they are following the structure, uh, completely following the structure, because like they are basically uh, uh, heavy particles uh, comparably. But I'm guessing if we switch to very low Sux number or fluid tracer, which they call fluid tracer particles, we can actually identify those like structure more clearly. But uh, for fully developed turbulent flow is like those are less pronounced compared to developing flow mm -hmm. or even jet flow. So um, I'm guessing first reason can be the the, the, uh, the weight of the particles or the stock number of the particle. The second one can be basically those coherent structure is not that much clear for fully developed turbulent flow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well, I, uh, just another one. Go ahead. Nobody? Pedro, you have a question? Well, uh, if not, I, I have some of the questions about your sure, approach. Yeah, so your model is the uh, two fluids, you said it has DNS. The DNS is for the fluids, right? Not for the particle. No, so for uh, my modeling approach is actually is Eulerian Lagrangian. So basically we have DNS for fluid flow. We are yeah. coupling or we are tracking each individual particle through the time through the Lagrangian approach. So basically we are tracking all of those particles inside the channel individually. So this one is not too fluid. Uh, actually, assumption. This is oh. Eulerian Lagrangian approach. Oh, okay. So, so actually, you track all the particles. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that should be more accurate. I think. Yeah. Or, and yeah. Uh, your uh, it sounds to me. Well, it it depends on your the stroke number. So you say this uh, stroke number uh, is small. It looks like uh, the particle moving. Uh, but mainly in, uh, influenced by the vortex, something like that. So your particle, uh, you know, track it is the uh, some uh, is the vortex structure. Something sounds like to me. When your stux number is higher, then you're not sure if the particle, you know, track, you know, it is uh, um, vortex structure, not right. Uh, my yeah. understanding. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, we are yeah. focusing because it's two-way coupling means that particles yeah. are affecting the turbulent flow too. We wanted yeah. to see first of all, we wanted to see how these like adding particle and then increasing the Sox number can affect those structure near in near wall region and how these particles are following the coherent structure near the wall. And basically, in this uh, like research or this small report, we wanted to use your method the new generation of new vortex identification method to see that can we like identify those structures uh, through this method and how these like increasing the Sox number and their effects uh, in the on turbulent, turbulent flow can be identified through this method, which is like totally makes sense. It affects and when we are going through higher Sox number, damping effect of these like adding the, like heavier particles is completely vivid through this uh, like vortex identification method. Yeah, I appreciate that. But uh, even your particle, you know, mm -hmm. mo motion or mm -hmm. uh, stress uh, uh, is not, it does not have this vortex structure. It doesn't mean the fluids uh, don't have the, you know, vortex structure. It sounds to me you, because your particle moving, it doesn't represent the, the vortex structure. If Stokes number is larger, right? It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. If it's a very large, like uh, very high Stokes number, yeah, it's like not following the structure at all. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's two different. One is the fluids, the other one yeah. is a particle. Yeah. The, yeah it, when the structure number is small, it looks like fluid mm -hmm. water structure and the particle mo uh, motion are mm -hmm. coincide, uh, agree to each other. When yeah. your structure number is larger, they don't, may not. So that 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 means uh, it doesn't matter your your particle that sounds uh, to not have the water structure, but the fluid still have the fluid, you know, water structure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is very 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 interesting talk. Very very very, very, very uh, nice work. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I would like to Im invite our next presenter, Chu Ying Chao, to begin his presentation. His title is uh, CFD Simulations of Vertex Flow on Unstructured Grid for Russell Craft. It's time for Chu Ying Chao's presentation. Thank you. Um, thanks, Chair, for the introduction. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can hear you. Okay, can thank you. It. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, please forgive my uh, weird <laughs> voice, and then I look like I might um, catch a fluid or COVID, something like that. Uh, but so just please just uh, ignore my weird voice. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction, and um, it's my pleasure to uh, present my work in this uh, Vertex workshop. And my topic is the uh, safety simulations of vertex flow on um, unstructured grids for rotorcraft. Um, I'm the assistant professor from the University of Toledo. All right, so let's discuss about the um, what I'm going to present. Uh, first of all, I will talk about the background of the rotorcraft simulations um, and our objectives, and followed by the results and some uh, analysis, and followed by the conclusions. Yeah, so actually uh, in our safety group, we have been uh, predicting rotor craft for years. And uh, since um, I think it's beginning 2014, okay, so previously we used the run solver to simulate uh, multiple uh, types of uh, rotors in Howard. And uh, we simulated a tilt rotor of including uh, JVX rotor and XV15 rotors. And we also simulated uh, the conventional rotor types, including the S76 uh, um, and NASA PSP rotors. And recently, we also uh, investigated the HVB rotor in Howard. If um, if any of you do not familiar with the uh, are not familiar with the uh, the rotor types, and um, let me give you a short um, introduction. So for the conventional rotor, actually, um, like the one. Uh, I'm going to present the results in today's um, work. Um, the rotor has a long and uh, less twisted blades. But for the tilt rotor, normally like JVX and XV15 uh, rotors, they have a relatively short rotor blades and highly twisted rotor blades. That is the uh, uh, main differences between the tilt rotor and the conventional rotors. Okay, so from the previous of uh, simulations using run solvers, uh, the conclusions or some um, uh, key points we obtained are the transition uh, models have uh, less effect on the prop rotor or the tilt rotors, however, predictions, but they do per, uh, present a uh, large effect on the conventional rotor predict predictions. And we do see the premature and the enlarged flow separations at high thrust and the high collective angles if we use the uh, the runs uh, solvers. Okay, so in that case, uh, the uh, the separation correction uh, method should be applied right at uh, at high collective angles. That's some uh, conclusions we obtained or uh, from the previous runs simulations on different type of rotors. 
Now for uh, the object uh, objectives for today's work, uh, of our current work, is we're going to continue to further investigate and validate the HVB, HVAB rotor in Hover. Uh, but instead of using the RAN solver, we use the hybrid RANS LES uh, method, and uh, mainly based on the SA uh, terminus model. Okay. So we're going to compare um, our simulated uh, results with the experimental data uh, or internal data. And uh, another objective is to, uh, to perform the um, grid sensitivity analysis in order to um, identify the uh, individual influence of the viscous surface and volume mesh resolutions on the Howard simulation predictions uh, for this rotor. And we are interested uh, at, in those three areas. Uh, first one is the integrated performance, um, uh, including the figure marriage, thrust, power coefficient, as well as the torque coefficient and so on so forth. The second one is the um, surface flow dynamics. Uh, that might include the uh, transition and the separation phenomena. Then lastly is the uh, the Downward, okay, the Hover rotor uh, downward phenomena are uh, intriggered by the uh, chilling tip uh, vertices. That's the objectives of this work. So let me introduce um, the uh, key technologies uh, involved in this simulation. So, first of all, we use the, uh, the our in house the unstructured and steady three-dimensional CFD solver. It is called ANCO, okay? We use the six-order, one-node uh, scheme for, uh, to calculate the invasive flux and the second-order viscous uh, flux. And we use the implicit Newton uh, sub-iteration sub -iteration method coupled with the backward Euler scheme. And for, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, uh, the, uh, the collective angle variations, we uh, only generate uh, one or uh, two grades, and we utilize the grid deformation uh, technique to allow the, uh, the, the pitch angle variation uh, among uh, the running of the simulations. And for the single blade domain, okay, or one quarter of the blade domain uh, computation domains, we apply the periodic uh, axis periodic boundary conditions to mimic the full uh, computational domain uh, effect. For the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the um, full rotor, we uh, use the uh, sliding interface tech, uh, technique to um, allow the uh, relative rotational motion. And then uh, turbulence models, um, we have building several different turbulence models in our code. And then uh, major used, uh, very often used recently, RSA and SST terms models. And then uh, we also introduce the transitions. So in this work, <clears throat> in this work, we use SA uh, combined with the transition terms model method. And at higher uh, collective angles, we apply the uh, separation correction method. All these calculations or uh, simulations in this work, we use the RANS LES hybrid method. Uh, in other words, at the near world region, we use RANS solver. And uh, away from the near world region or off world region, we use LES. And we use the uh, blending function to identify the RANS region and LES region. Lastly, we, we recently, hmm, thank you, uh, thanks for uh, the previous Leotax workshop, and we um, we might apply the Leotax method, building the Leotax uh, method into our code. So we use the Leotax method to identify vertices uh, for downward uh, vertex in our simulations. Okay. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me introduce the rotor um, configurations. So the HVAB rotor is a four-bladed uh, rotor, and the, uh, what we simulated is at tip Mach number 0.65 and uh, with RPM uh, 1250. And then here's uh, the table shows the uh, 
the parameters, uh, geometric parameters. So in here <clears throat> is the top view, <laughs> in the side view and the top view of the uh, isolated rotor. The solidity is um, 0.1, approximately 0.1. Let me introduce the computational domains. Um, we have two types of the computational domains. On the left is the single blade domain, or I would say one quarter of the full computational domains, because um, it, is, uh, it only contains the one quarter or single blade. Then we apply the periodic uh, boundary conditions uh, to the symmetric um, boundaries. On the right hand side is the illustration of the uh, full computational domain with the uh, the full rotor. And we use the sliding interface to perform the uh, relative uh, rotational motion. Right, so in this table shows the uh, safety meshes. And in this work, um, we perform the uh, grid sensitivity study. So we build three different meshes. Mesh A actually, um, has a refined surface, a most refined surface mass. And then um, it is built with a single blade. So it is the one quarter blade region. Mesh B and the mesh C are uh, built with the full uh, rotor computation domain. So in order to easy to compare uh, the size of the grid, so we convert all those three grids into uh, the corresponding equivalent one quarter domain size. So that we can uh, compare those grid side by side. So mass, uh, mass A has a refined surface mass, which is approximately seven times of the surface node uh, of the mesh B and the mesh C. And the mesh B um, and the mesh A major is used to study the uh, the blade flow field phenomena like uh, in, like transition and separations. Mesh B and the Mesh C, they all have the similar um, uh, surface grade distribution. Um, the surface grade uh, distribution, I would say the relatively coarse than Mesh A. However, uh, we refined Mesh B and the Mesh C's the downwards volume grade region so that we can use the Mesh B and the Mesh C to study the effect of the volume grade region uh, um, simulating the uh, identifying the uh, vertice uh, vertex simulation phenomena. Okay, so mesh C uh, has more than three times of the volume nodes uh, of mesh B. Okay, in um, simulate <clears throat> mesh A, we refine the surface grade only. Mesh B and mesh C, we uh, refine the downward volume grade. Um, and then with the relative coarse surface grade distribution. All right here is the illustration of the uh, viscous uh, blade surface grade uh, distributions. On the left hand side is the refined uh, blade uh, surface grade for mesh A. On the right hand side is the uh, coarse surface grade for both mesh B and mesh C. So. Um, uh, <clears throat> For all meshes, the one plus, one plus value is one. So this can uh, guarantee the uh, RANS modeling for new origin simulations. And then uh, for both meshes, we uh, refine the tip region, leading edge, leading edge region, trailing edge region, as well as the, uh, the hub region. All right, so the previously we uh, illustrate the surface grade uh, resolutions among different meshes. Now on this slide, we're going to see, uh, we see this uh, volume mesh refinement among those three grades. So we can see mesh A in the alpha region, um, we can only see uh, on a right, on a near the immediately near region uh, below this uh, viscous blade, Mesh A has a finer grade uh, distribution than Mesh B and Mesh C. However, for, in general, for the overall downwards regions, Mesh B and Mesh C has a very fine, uh, refined volume grade regions than Mesh A. Okay. 
Match C has even finer, uh, even refined volume grade. Okay. So in the uh, uh, shortly, uh, I'm going to um, demo the results we simulated. So we notice that the word has prediction, uh, the accuracy of the word has prediction is affected a lot by the volume grade resolution. Right. Now let's get into the results um, section. Let's look at the first uh, interest area, that is the integrated daughter performance. Uh, so in this slide, we uh, see the figure merit on the left hand side and power coefficient versus the thrust coefficient on the right hand side. And in both uh, plots, we can see those dots represent the experimental data. And then that the line is the uh, uh, predicted or simulation results using MASH A. And the solid line is the predict results using MASH B. And we can see a single red dot, square red dot. That is the um, a single uh, simulation results using match C for uh, the collective angle of 10 degree. Okay. So from the uh, figure merit uh, simulation of results comparison, we can see the predicted uh, figure merit value uh, align well with experiment in general. Uh, almost for uh, across all collective angle ranges. However, we do see some deviations right at high uh, thrust region. So this deviation um, is due to the uh, over predicted the power coefficient. And if you're married, <clears throat> <clears throat> and we notice that the uh, the figure merit predicted by the refined mesh mesh A um, agree best with experimental data. So um, and then uh, definitely in this case we can see the refined surface grade. Uh, helps to enhance the prediction on the uh, integrated uh, parameters such as figure merit and the power coefficient. And we also notice that the match C, match C um, is uh, refined in the downwards volume grade region, even though we don't see match C has much improvement on the figure merit prediction, even though the volume grade uh, is refined a lot compared to uh, MASH B. So we will say the volume grade does not provide uh, too much help, I would say, on the integrated uh, parameter uh, simulation. So on this slide, we also uh, put, uh, compare the dimensional values. On the left-hand side is the thrust, on the right-hand side is the torque simulation. Okay. So both thrust and the torque, uh, their trend okay, actually are similar with the figure of merit and uh, with the trends of the figure of merit and the power coefficient uh, we just demoed previously. And the thrust and the torque results on both mesh A and mesh B shows a similar behavior. Uh, in general, the predicted thrust uh, compared well with experimental data. Uh, on all collective angles. And then uh, we do see the uh, the over predicted torque um, at uh, very high collective angles. So uh, that um, this collective angle is more than uh, bigger than 10 degree. And that's due to the limitation of the run solver, the inherent limitation of the run solver on a prediction of the transition and the separation phenomena. This is the integrated rotor performance. Right. So now we tabulate all the uh, dimensional uh, thrust, torque, um, as well as the figure and merit of 10 degrees of all meshes and compare them with the corresponding experimental data. 
And from here, we can directly see that's purely for the 10 degree pitch angle. From here, we can see mesh B and mesh C show very similar predictions for the thrust, torque, and figure merit. So which indicate that the, uh, the increased mass, mass resolution uh, in the downwards volume of grid region uh, on mesh C doesn't help very much to uh, affect the prediction of the integrated uh, value like figure merit. Okay. But for mesh A, uh, even though the, we, we obtained a good prediction of the figure merit close to the experimental data, however, if you look at the value of the thrust and the torque uh, for this refined mesh A, we have over predicted the thrust and the torque comparing to the experimental data. So that might due to uh, the different sightings of the uh, blade. And the reason is the blade has no, the uh, uh, mesh A has no the tilt angle and the lag effect. However, uh, the experiment they might evolve with the, um, the tilt angle and the lag effect. So we just look at the, um, the integrated, integrated uh, values. Now let's get into the uh, rotor surface flow field. Okay. Showing here is a uh, 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 predicted skin friction on the upper and the lower surface of the blade. And below we see those uh, gray uh, pictures. Those are the uh, experiment, experimental thermographic uh, pictures from the wind tunnel. And the reason we show four uh, experiment, experimental data, a picture here, that's because they have done multiple sections of experiment. Okay. From here, um, we can see the separation induced transition can be uh, seen on the lower surface um, for this pitch angle, which is a degree. And so the predicted skin, uh, skin friction distribution on the finer mesh, mesh A, uh, a lot well, reasonably well with experimental data, we can see those details of the uh, separations on the uh, experimental uh, photos uh, along with the, uh, the lower surface of our safety sour. And we do see on the upper surface, we do see the uh, the transition phenomena compared with the uh, experimental data. So here's the 10 degree uh, pitch angle comparison values. Uh, the trend are similar. We do see much detailed uh, patterns on refined mesh A. However, on mesh B, we can only see the trend, but it, they don't pro it doesn't provide the very uh, accurate uh, details comparing with the experimental data. Here's the results uh, for 12 degrees. Okay. So overall, the refined blade surface resolution enhances the capturing uh, the flow field, um, such as uh, transition and the separations on the outer surface. Um, however, the transition and separation are mainly uh, affected by the near wall runs modeling, and it has a less effect by the off wall areas models method. So here is the um, the, the downwards prediction uh, among three different meshes. And showing here is presented by Liu tax method. I believe the value of the Liu tax value is 0.1. So we compare uh, the O3 masses at 10 degree pitch angles. So we can clearly see mass A, um, it just failed in predicting the details of the vertices. And the mass B, we see noticeably improvement. And if you look at mass C, we see more refined representation of the vertex structures along with the main vertices as well as the secondary vertices, as you can see uh, the dissipation along the downward directions. And here is the uh, vertex magnitude uh, along the, uh, the cutting plan along the uh, downward directions also compared right at the 10 degree pitch angles. And just like the previous uh, plot and the mesh A, 
uh, we can bear, we only can see the large structure of the vertices. Match B, we see the improvement, but match C, we see more details. Here is the uh, downward velocity magnitude, also right at uh, the 10 degree pitch angles. And then uh, we see the similar trends among those three uh, meshes. So together, these results are uh, implicit that the how important the volume grade refinement on the prediction of the uh, details of the downward vertices. And refined volume mesh has a uh, limited impact, however, on the predict uh, on predicting of the uh, the integrated values such as figure merit and the thrust. I have to go quickly. Okay, so um, previously we just done with the uh, the isolated rotor simulations, and then uh, we have preliminary results for the installed rotor. Uh, meaning we have the uh, rotor and uh, the fuselage simulated together. And the fuselage information um, showing this table, that is the Robin Mod 7 fuselage. And the rotor, uh, rotor is exactly the same rotor, HVAB rotor applied in the isolated rotor simulations. Okay. Here's the illustration of the uh, installed rotor uh, structure methods. And we use the sliding interface again to um, allow the uh, relative rotational motion. And uh, here is the uh, illustration of the, uh, I believe that's the uh, velocity, downwards velocity. Compare, uh, that's the comparison between the isolated rotor and the installed rotor. And uh, from the isolated rotor, even though we can see the details of the vertices, uh, but the flow field is kind of sort of the uh, symmetric. If you look at the right-hand side of the installed water, because of the existence of the fuel sludge, we can see the flow field, we can see the interaction between the uh, isolated water, rotor blades, and this fuel sludge. Here is the uh, closed view of the uh, downward velocity uh, between the isolated water and installed water. We can see more clear, uh, clearly the interaction between the rotor and fuse large. Now we compare the LUTEX, okay, uh, or vertex identification, a uh, downward vertex using LUTEX method. Again, the LUTEX value Excuse is me. 0.1. Yeah. Five, five minutes left. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, oh. I, I will be done shortly. So uh, we see, uh, again, compare uh, similar with the previous trend and for the isolated water, even though we can see a lot of details along the downwards region and for the installed water, we can see, especially uh, towards the uh, the tail of the fuse large, we can see uh, some uh, asymmetric vertices structure uh, appeared in this flow region. Now here's the closed view of the uh, comparison of the downwards uh, vertices representations among isolated water and the installed water. Okay, uh, the blue color represent the magnitude of the total velocity, and then we again uh, from this enlarged flow field uh, representation, we see some interactions. What is the interactions between the rotor and fuel large? Now we come to the conclusion. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we performed the uh, hybrid uh, mainly using the SALES method uh, to predicting the uh, the isolated rotor and the installed rotor simulations. And we perform, the, we carry out the uh, grid resolution studies. We have the following conclusions. Uh, number one, the prediction of the rotor integrated performance, including thrust, torque, figure merit, and so on and so forth, uh, are mainly, is mainly uh, affected by uh, the near world runs modeling and improved predictions of the trailing vertices in the rotor downward uh, appear to have a relative less impact on those integrated uh, rotor aerodynamic parameters. Number two, we found surface mass resolution on rotor surfaces plays an important role in capturing the complicated flow field features, such as uh, transition uh, and uh, uh, separations. And number three, 
to capture the detailed vertex structures in the downwards region. And we have to have the uh, sufficient refined volume meshes. And that's that's the key. And then uh, to allow the LES model to work well to predict those uh, details of those uh, downward structures uh, at upward rating. Um, yeah, so we have to find out a way to improve uh, our uh, balance uh, function to better predict the uh, near war runs region and off war LBS region. Thank you so much. And sorry for my words. Okay, thank thank you for your excellent excellent presentation. But due to the time limit, we we have to go to the next talk. And the next talk is from the Guo Chen Tong. His title is a study on the flow field of strange violet vertical mm -hmm. axis wind turbines with different airfoils. And it's time for for you. Okay. It's some noise. We can, yeah, the microphone yeah. is not working properly. We can't hear you. We cannot hear you very clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tong Guqiang. I'm from Northeast Agricultural University. Uh, the topic of my report today is the study on the profile of straight bladed vertical axis wind turbines with different LCMs. Oh. Uh, I will report on the following four facts. Uh, they are uh, background research method uh, results and uh, summary. The first is the background. Uh, wind energy is one of the first sources of uh, energy used by humans. Humans have been exploring ways to honor wind energy for centuries. Uh, as early as the uh, 10th century, the person who developed the vertical access wind turbine to grant green and uh, irrigate their cells. Uh, after in, uh, uh, sustainable efforts, wind turbines were designed to utilize the wind energy. In the most recent decades, uh, the energy industry has witnessed a phenomenal worldwide increase of wind energy uh, honored by wind turbines. A wind turbine, also known as a wind mile, uh, is a um, uh, uh, energy conversion device that uh, converts uh, wind energy into mechanical, electrical, or thermal energy. According to the relative position uh, of the shaft, uh, rotor shaft uh, to the ground, they can be divided into horizontal access wind turbines and uh, vertical access wind turbines. According to the working principle, they can be divided into uh, leftist wind turbines and uh, directive wind turbines. Uh, wind turbines began to develop significantly in the 20th century, uh, added by aerodynamic perform, uh, uh, aerodynamic research in the aircraft uh, industry. Uh, currently, the most popular type of wind turbine is the large-scale horizontal access wind turbine. Uh, uh, this type of wind turbine has uh, uh, excellent uh, wind energy utilized. Uh, Uh, this straight bladed vertical axis wind turbine is the classical type of vertical axis wind turbine. 
Uh, it has a high share in the small scale wind turbine market. Uh, with the advantage of uh, uh, aesthetically more appealing wind direction dependence, uh, simple structure, low noise, mechanical components close to the ground, uh, as well as they are suitable for off grid power generation operations. Uh, however, uh, this does not mean the uh, vertical uh, vertical axis wind turbines are less available than horizontal axis wind turbines for application. A recent study has shown that the wind farm with three bladed vertical axis wind turbines are, are more economical than wind farm with horizontal axis wind turbines. There are significant differences between horizontal access wind turbine and uh, vertical access wind turbine. Uh, vertical access wind turbine have the advantage of uh, being able to accept uh, uh, wind from uh, any direction without uh, uh, yield west. Uh, generally, they do not uh, use uh, the control of blade mounting angle for speed regulation, and uh, the generator can be mounted on the ground. Uh, which are not uh, available with horizontal axis wind turbines. The street related vertical axis wind turbines are currently limited uh, mainly by poor self starting performance and uh, dynamic style. Uh, a lot of research types have, have been carried out uh, to address uh, these problems. Devices such as the uh, wind concentrator, uh, diffuser, uh, deflector, and uh, vertex generator have been designed. And uh, this study has improved the performance of street bladed vertical access wind turbine to different degrees. Uh, it is still necessary to start from the foundation of the uh, flow to solve these problems uh, fundamentally. Uh, the analysis and uh, optimization of vertex in the flow field may provide a new idea for the optimization study of street bladed vertical access wind turbine. However, a measurement by experiment is difficult and very expensive. In the simulation is very convenient and efficient research method. In this study, uh, the street related vertical RFS wind turbine with the NSA 0010, NSA 018, and the NSA 026 files are used for the study. The numerical simulations were first performed. Subsequently, the Lutex method was used to process the profile. The effect of FL thickness is described by comparing and analyzing the profile from different angles to provide a reference for future optimization studies. Now, the next step is the research method. The following are the theoretical research methods, including model method and the numerical simulation. And the most popular method for starting street related vertical access wind turbine are uh, wind tunnel types, numerical simulation, and the PFD, among which numerical simulation are considered to be the most uh, promising research for. So we use the numerical simulation method to start it. Now, the street related vertical access wind turbines with uh, air files of NSA 010, NSA 018, and uh, NSA 026 are used in this study. As can be seen from the figure, uh, the biggest difference between uh, these three air file types is uh, different in the thickness. Uh, the blade call length is uh, 60 mm. Uh, the diameter is uh, uh, 600 mm. The blade height is uh, 120 mm. And the uh, uh, wind speed is uh, 8 m per section. The reflex method is used to identify vortex in a dynamic flow field with a T-speed ratio of 2. Other numerical simulations were performed using NSF splint, and uh, the computational domain is uh, in the figure on the left. The grades are uh, equipped by body of influence uh, to save the number of grades and uh, to obtain a better flow file. The total number of grades is uh, 40 mm and uh, transition simulation are performed. The next step is the result. Uh, for the sake of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the 
rotating cylinder are referred to as uh, uh, the inside and the outside of the cylinder as the outside uh, in the body. The profile of the, of the three-plated vertical axis wind turbine is uh, extremely complex, uh, containing strong deep vertex, uh, a deep, uh, vertex at the blade surface and uh, the interaction between uh, the deep vertex and the vertex at the uh, blade surface. And uh, the blade uh, also undergo a change of uh, pressure surface uh, and the reflection surface, which also implies uh, that the tip vertex is uh, shifted from the inside to the outside. Now, this not only leads to difference uh, in the slow field and uh, uh, the various uh, cross section, especially near the tip, but also the difference in the blade uh, performance at a different location. And the figure shows the inside slow field distribution. Uh, as the angle is uh, 60, uh, a distinct vertex uh, appears on the blade surface, and the vertex at the tip is uh, enhanced. Uh, as uh, the angle grows to 90, a significant uh, flow variation occurs at uh, the leading edge of the blade. And uh, it is uh, noteworthy that the vertex uh, uh, gradually decreases from the mid plane to the deep plane, uh, which is mainly due to the effect of the tip flow. Uh, which also imply a different in aerodynamic performance of the blade. As the angle increases to 150, the vertex is more uh, disordered in the profile, and uh, the tip vertex uh, has not yet uh, duplicated. Uh, when the angle increases to 180, the tip vertex uh, uh, mixes with the, rot the vertex on the blade surface and uh, the vertex the confusion in uh, while the tip vertex shows the uh, signs of breaking. Uh, this angle is the uh, crucial position for the exchange of pressure and the section surface, uh, which makes the flow field very complicated. When the angle increases to 240, the tip flow uh, turns completely to the outside, and uh, the most uh, uh, vertex on the blade surface is detached, and uh, due to the small angle of attack at this time, no more vertex is uh, uh, produced. When the angle is uh, shifted from 270 to 330, the flow state at this time is uh, similar to the angle from 0 to 60. Uh, the figure shows the uh, distribution of the outside flow field. Uh, more of the vertex uh, acted at uh, zero degree, uh, and uh, as the angle uh, gradually increases to 150, the vertex uh, gradually weakens or even do not act. When the angle increases to the 180, uh, uh, the vertex starts uh, to overwhelm. Uh, when the angle comes to 210, uh, uh, in addition to the more obvious vertex on the blade surface, uh, the tip vertex also shows a uh, tendency to shift uh, to the outside. Uh, at an uh, angle of 240, the tip vertex is uh, fully uh, uh, convenient uh, 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 to the outside. And at the same time, uh, the distinct vertex appears at the outside leading edge. Uh, at the angle of uh, 270, the vertex continues to incorrect, but do not completely cover the blade surface, uh, which also implies different uh, aerodynamic performance distribution along the gradient direction. At an angle of 300, the vertex uh, cover the entire blade surface and uh, the tip of flow mixes with it. Uh, as the angle increases to 330, the vertex shows uh, uh, signs of uh, weakening. Uh, the figure shows the flow field of NACO18. Overall, the flow field distribution is very close to the NACO10. However, it can be seen from the blade tape line. 
and the chief vertex is uh, you have the uh, NK over eight uh, uh, perform almost uh, identical to the NK over at angle from zero to sixty. As the angle increases to ninety, the leading edge of the blade also shows a distinct vertex. However, it is not worth it that the vertex at this point is significantly weaker than uh, that of NAC or LO. Vertex on the surface of the blade uh, uh, do not uh, differ much from, uh, uh, from the NAC or LO at an angle of 120 and 150. Well, Vertex on the blade tap is uh, significantly stronger. When the angle is uh, increased to 180, no significant uh, fracture of the tip vertex occurs at this time. A fracture of the tip vertex is delayed until the uh, angle of 110. These many angles are consistent with the, the collapse uh, description. Uh, uh, for the outside, the biggest difference, uh, difference from NSA over occurs at uh, 240 uh, and 270. At uh, this point, the vertex of the leading edge of the blade is smaller in the fourth case, uh, while the rest of the angle behave uh, almost uh, unchanged. The overall performance of NSA 026 is uh, uh, almost uh, identical to NSA 0018. Both show stronger tip vertex compared to NSA 0018, while the rest of performance was uh, less different. Uh, the condition at the remaining angle were nearly identical to NSA 0018. Eight, including uh, the occurrence of tip vertex break, uh, uh, expect that the uh, 90 and 120 blade surface has a uh, weaker vertex. The outside profile uh, maintain a, a similar variation. Uh, the vertex on the blade surface uh, becomes uh, weaker uh, only at uh, 240 and 270. Well, the vertex behavior almost uh, the same as the uh, NSA overlaid at the rest of the angle. So the above shows the pressure distribution along the threading direction. And it should be noted that the T vertex is not highlighted here, but rather a fair uh, demonstration of the pressure distribution in the threading direction. As can be seen from figure, uh, as the cross section moves towards to the uh, blade tip, uh, the flow in the section surface undergo a process of moving closer to the blade surface and uh, towards to leading edge, which is uh, in line with the uh, progress vertex performance, and uh, which results in uh, increase in the aerodynamic performance of the blade. Uh, for NACA O and O, the pressure distribution along the threading direction undergoes the same pr process as for NACA O and O. Uh, however, due to the weaker from threading at uh, the blade surface uh, for NACA O and A, uh, this also results in a weak aerodynamic performance in quite near the blade face. Uh, for NACO26, the thickness of blade in this party. The pressure distribution along the threading direction is uh, uh, similar to the two provides airfield. The fact that the vertex is the weakest at the surface of this blade makes the performance improvement at the tip almost uh, unavailable in the data uh, of data plot. Oh, finally, there is the summary. Uh, the effects of uh, RFL thickness on 
isolated vertical arc of wind turbines was investigated by an inertia simulation. The results show that uh, the flow file of the uh, isolated vertical arc of wind turbine is uh, extremely complex, and uh, the search from uh, uh, perspective of uh, optimization. Uh, Optimizing the flow files may be an uh, effective way to improve the aerodynamic performance of a circulated vertical axis wind turbine. A flow variation on the surface of a thinner airfoil air blade occurs earlier and more uh, rapidly. Uh, and the greater of uh, greater uh, the thickness of the airfoil, the weaker the performance is enhanced at the blade tip. Okay, thanks for your listening. <clears throat> okay, thank you for your excellent presentation. Any questions? Okay, it seems no no question. No, no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask some, but uh, yeah. Uh, first, uh, so uh, what kind of simulation you are doing? Is uh, DNS or LDS or RANS? Or oh, LDS. DNS uh -huh. or RANS? How many grids? Uh -huh. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I use uh, the grid the number is uh, uh, 40 million. Uh. Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, 40 million grid uh, points. Yeah, uh, okay. So uh, your uh, spam wise. I just your spam wise uh, use the periodic bound collision because you all uh -huh. L for you. Yeah, I just say, you, do you have tip? I don't. I, I I'm supposed you don't have tip, right? It's uh, oh, okay. That's the he he use symmetry boundary condition in the spam wise direction. Uh, he, in the figure uh, page page fourteen, right? It, it, I think, uh, okay, is it periodic or just the... Symmetry. Symmetric. It's or kind symmetry. of like a periodic. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, okay. Symmetric. Okay. Symmetric doesn't mean the top and the bottom. The span wise, how to do the symmetric. How to do the symmetric. Yeah, that's, that's the first things I am concerned because, uh, uh, but you call the sub uh, not GAD simulation, but uh, not subgrade model, right? Do you have a subgrade model? Uh, uh, there is a half of, a, of the model. You don't have a model, right? Turbulence model. Uh, have you oh, used turbulence. Model? Not a subway model. Okay. Okay. That, that model. Uh, uh, what uh, what uh, kind of turbine model is? Oh, yes. Subgrid model. <laughs> well, sub which subgrid model? Uh, in areas. Oh. Oh. Smart risky or, or dynamic smart risky or other W A R E or. Oh, maybe W L E. You have some models, right? Okay. You have some models. Okay. And uh, what is your grids? The grids uh, use the axis, right? You use axis, right? Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So so really, you don't know. So how to generate the grids or how uh, use a model? Maybe they already have model already. So you didn't give any model or you didn't develop any model. But they say you use the commercial code, right? That, that's correct. Yeah, uh, it's correct. Yeah. 
You use the commercial code, the access, right? Access, access, like fluent or something. Like that. So you, I, I saw your a slide say, so you use the answers uh, uh, fluent. So for the oh. simulation, right? Yeah, I, 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 I saw it. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 say use uh, like um, uh, forty million grid points or something like that. Yeah. And uh, if we well, I I I don't know how you to treat the uh, the span wise boundary condition. I don't know. Yeah, but you maybe use the. Uh, commercial code, they automatically assume this is the uh, periodic. Now, it is, it is three simulations, but a 2D airfoil. So that, that, that the people call, call them. But the second thing is, I know you have some, not only channel, you have some mm, attack angles. I think from your graphic, I see you have some attack uh, angles, uh, but uh, your vortex structure, it sounds to me not very clear. So what kind of uh, method I use? So I use uh, lutex isosurface or use the lutex omega method? And I'm a little oh, curious. Just a lutex only. Oh. Not and a new yeah. But uh, then I think uh, for new time method, you still needed to adjust it, uh, uh, the threshold. You still need to adjust threshold, make it uh, more clear. It sounds to me, the vortex structure, you, you can move down. The, the new tech structure sounds to me not very uh, clear. Sounds to me, yeah. It, it looks like uh, some kind of smear, or mix it together, it sounds to me, yeah. So really, I suggested that you may need to adjust the threshold or use the, with a, a neutral omega method. I think that method maybe, they don't need to adjust it to the, the threshold much, but get a more clearly what structure. But because you still use isosurface. Yeah, we can see some water structure, but a lot of area uh, sounds to me is not very clear. Uh, that, that's, that, that's, that's what I think. Not very clear, the water structure. So that's I suggest that you, either way, you need to adjust the threshold or use the new text omega method. Make the water structure more clear, I think. Yeah, some fix okay, some fix not very clear. Sounds to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's my. Okay. There, there are people. Yeah. If we, if I have any questions. So. Any questions? Okay, it seems no more questions. And uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. And I would like to invite our next presenter, Hao Zhe Chen. His title is The Impact of Solid Ballet on the Flow Field of Strange Ballet vertical axis wind turbines. Now it's time for Hao Zhe Chen for his presentation. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you.
Hello, every, everyone. I'm Cheng Haozhe from Northeast Agriculture Union. of slotted blade on the flow. And uh, the report from the following excerpts. In recent years, with the exciting of energy security, the development and the uh, attention worldwide, industries such as wind energy and uh, mm -hmm. solar. Power emerging as one of the most globally. And uh, in recent years, both domestic and uh, international capacity is steadily increasing with the support of. And development have progressed rapidly. And in 2021, China for 51 of the global total. Of wind power in the energy structure, the current predominant. towards large scale and great committed turbines being the mainstream technology. On the other hand, horizontal exceed one type due to large occupying significant land air during installation. In contrast, The main set structure. In rural areas, urban centers, and modern high rise cities, compared to apartments, have a relatively simple structure and a higher safety promise. have several advantages, including the ability, ab ability to capture wind from multiple directions without the need for your mesh. Maintenance, inspection, and this wind turbine exhibit strong output. One drawback is the comparatively lower wind energy utility. Research, research on vertical asset wind turbines have been focused on enhancing wind energy. Efficient capture of wind energy requires optimal. including delaying slow to higher and the numerous methods to achieve optimal magnificence within the wind turbine set. utilize the resist Resistance change. Just as one turbine. Others contact contact any buffets in the 
XY plane or is the only flow some researchers flown in alteration to turbo for vertical access and wind turbines. Some research researchers explored changes in the plane. Place at pedestrian edge or to enhance its performance. The concept of multi technique have been established as an efficient approach in the It's introduced as a high lift configuration to improve the aerodynamic performance. And airfoil approach help overcome the challenges that occur with the production of large plates. I have nature matter and design. Airplane, such as ordinary layer layers. Encouraging, they have a large lift coefficient lower dragon coefficient and more several severe environmental conditions. Here we discuss complete completion of a custom optimi is a zero zero one eight airfoil pressure side to the suction side of the plane. The original result in decrease in lift and a decrease. And based on the above, Introduce blade internal source slots. The study for two different types of slots are employed. One with a wider research on slot width, wide width, and the blade height indicates that the slot wide width need to be sufficiently while the arch blade providing enough moment moment another type of the another type is a uh, relative to fix extending from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the blade. There is a Y8 airfoil profile with a correlation of 100. It's considered in the calculation. The diagram represents as the velocity in that. Um, diameter from the turbine center. So 
functions as a pressure outline position as a, <coughs> as a turbine center. Pressure versatility computing is implemented using the simple algorithms. Second old process <coughs> format. And I'm seven as a part. And the one speed in light. Of okay, through the one through the one speed chart, it can be clear, clearly observed that at a low and angles of attack, the incoming flow flow on the pressure side of the wind turbine blade. The airflow is slightly lower than. side of the blade. Typically, the income low velocity in the slow in previously studied. I tried various why is it too small? The income flow the income flow It cannot effectively supplement the airflow, leading to the two slow types, the impact of conventional slot on the flow section. Airflow velocity is higher, resulting in the formation of The of the slow, which is detrimental to the and the slow compression with the follow field of base the reference air field, the flow field began. And of the the flow field remains attached through so the test processing it is to wind light from the pressure side As the section side and the inhibiting flow separates from the section side, the incoming flow from the slot meets the of the internal slot makes the flow field around the blade more complex and the formation of more what is it. Airflow velocity at the middle position of the coil. The higher pressure flow wind allowed, followed by reattachment. A E limited. Of attacks uh, left the confusion experience undergoes a substantial reduced reduction by search results indicate that in the introduct introducting a push
as performance, but when the end of the stagnation point moves towards to learn to reduce pressure grand gradient between the inlet and the lot. finger as a result in sufficient downstream momentum on the suction side occur to resulting in install through the new test mode <laughs> the distribution of playing a crucial role in And uh, my report can lose that. That's all. Okay, thank you for your excellent presentation. Any questions? Okay, you can of your mic. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, the communication uh, intermittently uh, terminated, but it, was it due to my my problem uh, in my hotel? Um, okay. Um, my my question is that. Um, do you have any uh, wing characteristics um, like CL uh, lift uh, characteristics uh, according to the uh, wing angle, or um, do you have any the stall characteristics regarding the present wing? Uh, yes, I have some. I have some data. According to the wind angle. Uh, Mr. Chang, the blade on the. It's not very good. <laughs> Oh, uh, can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 so I think uh, I. <laughs> to more data about the CL and. Sorry, sorry. Soul characteristics. Um, the angle, uh, stall angle, according to uh, uh, stall angle. The present slotted wing. I have some research on it, but I didn't. Uh... Oh, okay, thank you very much. So uh, that's all the presentations uh, in this session. And uh, according to the agenda, uh, we should have a one hour break. OK, see you all in one hour.